Sometimes they can forget a little bit about the other aspects of music making. No, 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 no. They have to believe in themselves and have a huge amount of confidence to be on the stage. So if you just stand like this in the same locked position, you, you stop telling the story. It's very important that they liberate 30, 40 percent of their mind capacity in order to give this part of themselves to a director. This. It's sort of like a eureka moment. Always be prepared to go there, yeah, you know, yeah. and go even too far. I think you know, singers, are, when, when they're studying, they're so busy trying to show us how good they are and make their greatest sound, but they hijack themselves a lot in the process. Um, so we have to bring them back a little bit to the authentic self. And when that happens, it's sort of like a eureka moment. And, and then we can start really the process of working and finding the artist within. I'm Jake Ingbar. I'm from the United States of America. I am a countertenor and I'm 27 years old. I guess for me, I find it sort of cathartic, both exhilarating but also therapeutic. And um, yeah, you discover a lot about yourself uh, throughout the process. I miss this sort of arrogance that comes yeah. with this ambition, you know? And the pleasure and stop worrying now about making sound. Okay. You know? Jake really uh, needs provoking to keep reacting. So he's never just comfortable and making beautiful sound. Yeah. Why? Oh, why? In our sessions, we try to really, really keep the energy going and keep this sort of articulation and this intense emotion that keeps building so it never stays the same. With Jake, it's an evolution of emotion and heightened feelings and, and just a constant building force. This. So you get to this... You just got to that sort of growling point. Yeah. For a singer, the eyes are the window to the soul. We have to be able to look into these eyes and really follow the story very clearly. Good, good. Always be prepared to go there, yeah. you know, and go even too far. So they have to be very open and honest and really accessing their, their feelings. Yeah, it's interesting, like as soon as you stop singing, you for, it's like you forget to breathe naturally. Yeah! You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, and then you're like, oh, okay, yeah. I can. But you know, even, Jake, when you're singing, because that's an interesting point, even when you're singing, you should breathe yeah. naturally. Singers, because they come from training years, they usually look at their parts as, I have to sing this technically perfectly, which is very, very important. But sometimes they can forget a little bit about the other aspects of music making. Imagination, illustrating the text, bringing out the poem, which is, has an artistic quality by itself. It's not only there to serve the music, but it's also musical in itself. And sometimes singers need a little bit of reminders that that's also there and that they should make it evident to the audience but at this point. When you switch from inganar to a ah, exclamation point, a ah, exclamation point, mm -hmm. make me feel that your character is saying ah, ah, non inganar. I try to... Not just a beautiful vowel. Yeah. Inspire the, content. The, the young singers. 
I, I'm not a singer myself, but I had a little bit of basic training in singing, and I trained as a conductor and as a pianist, so I try to bring to the students a little bit more of a general, transversal knowledge. And you have this two per two, la la mia. For me, that already introduces doubt. So sometimes it's, I talk about technique, about placement of the, of the consonants, which is a big thing when singing Italian, especially for, for singers that come from, that their mother language is not right. Italian or French or, or Spanish, that helps, of course. So that's where I tackle technically. It's usually the placement of the tongue. For me, it's the L, what, what pulls you back. Yeah. I hear l'alma instead of l'alma mia. Yeah. Uh, can we do? Uh, uh, can you play that uh, B B flat A? My name is Amy, and I am a Taiwan-born, New Zealand-raised pianist. I am currently in my second year as a repetitor in the Dutch National Opera Studio. And I think being in this part of my career, it's really nice to be in a young artist program. But I'm treated like a professional, but I get to have that mentorship. That L and that R seems much better than what you did originally, yeah. already. I think it's less about where the L is. You don't pronounce a T in Italian the same way you do it in English, for instance. Mm -hmm. And that makes a big difference of sound. It affects the vowels also, and singers when they sing in Italian, they sing in vow on vowels. So, uh, but maybe that's too technical. I think. A lot of the work that we do with directors is mind over matter. Singers are often very much distracted on the stage, um, often performing activities that bear no relationship to the text they're singing. So it's very important that we, we have some classes that give them that possibility to free themselves from the singer, the text, being perfect. Because if you're only constantly goal orientated, getting everything right, getting the French right, getting the style right, getting all of these notes and delivering, you never have chance to breathe and to really discover who you are. Jake was laying the table and I think we see very clearly uh, with this activity that he was very free. <laughs> It was very free, came to life, and yeah, it was a fantastic freeing experience for him vocally. Well, I don't know, how did you, how did you receive this sound? Yeah, I felt uh, more connected to my lower self for sure. I also felt when you are um, this anchored, it's really hard to overblow because exactly. your core is slightly engaged, so you're not... You're not pushing, pushing any it. sound yeah. now. And all of this brightness that you were working on in a coaching session mm -hmm. uh, earlier on with Pedro, all of this sort of hard palate sound mm -hmm. had to happen because you, you didn't need to make any extra space. Yeah. It was already there. In the beginning, Jake is making beautiful sound and sharing his glorious voice. And throughout the session, we see him really, really engaging in his connection, in his solar plexus, and starting to believe these emotions. And as a result, we're feeling a whole new dynamic and energy to his singing. And it sounds even more passionate. Give yourself permission to always be free. Yeah. to express. When you stop singing, it's even more important. Oh. <laughs> 